Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. If there's one thing we've learned when filming Wild Kingdom, it's that nature can be harsh. Not all animals are strong and healthy enough to survive. In tonight's episode, we'll explore the relationship between predator and prey. Each plays an important role in keeping animal populations in check. The old and the sickly animals are naturally weeded out, leaving the strong and the healthy to produce the next generation. In fact, predators are only successful about 50% of their attempts to catch food. This reality can seem harsh, but it's absolutely necessary to create that delicate yet natural balance of the animals in the wild kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. The great sea of sawgrass making up the Florida Everglades here in the southern portion of that state is one of the wildest primitive marsh areas remaining in this country. Throughout this expansive area of shallow, slow-moving water and sawgrass, there are numerous small islands called hammocks. They are very low with stunted and gnarled tree growth but they're the only areas of dry ground in the thousands of square miles which make up the Everglades. Because they are dry areas slightly higher than their surroundings, they become havens for a wide variety of wildlife. Here, the Everglades deer and bear, panther and otter, and a multitude of other creatures come to rest, feed and raise families, and many confrontations between these animals occur. The hammocks often have colorful names, such as gooseneck, gator roar, dead man, and panther perch. Our story today deals with one of these islands, and we call it A Day at Otter Hammock. There is a peacefulness, a timelessness, a spaciousness to the Everglades, a feeling that they go on forever. The waters, whether open or overgrown with luxuriant sawgrass, are clear and fresh. A great variety of life abounds here, but it is the hammocks which become the focal point for such life. Otter hammock is one of these. Its dense growth of swamp trees help form an ideal habitat. Otter hammock has a small lake within it a lagoon-like body of water which attracts some of the larger animals, like this big black bear. Here the animals find peace and solitude, freedom from human interference, a perfect place to live, and they are active day and night. Bobcats roam openly, fearlessly, in broad daylight. Even the deer are up and about this day, quietly enjoying the cooler interior of Otter Hammond. Yet the prevailing peace does not mean that the wildlife which lives here has lost its wariness. To the contrary, the raccoons retain their wariness as an ingrained characteristic. They and the armadillos, along with the other wild animal residents, must remain alert to survive. The otter is not only alert to danger, but is curious about any life nearby. A terrapin quietly sunning itself does not escape the constant curiosity and mischievousness of the otter. This log sloping into the water is one of the otter's favorite spots, and he's not too pleased if someone else uses it. His curiosity about everything in his territory, above water or below, makes him very familiar with the entire hammock habitat and the other animals living here. The 
the sluggishness of this turtle does not long hold his interest, and soon he leaves the reptile to itself. For the otter, who loves playing and exploring above all, the day holds many exciting things. The grassy underwater areas are warm and pleasant, and he spends as much of his day here as he does on the hammock above, reveling in his enjoyment of both worlds. He is in this colorful below surface world in the realm of the largemouth bass. But today, these fish don't hold his attention because of a sudden disturbance nearby. The armadillo doesn't often intrude on the otter's domain like this, since he's a clumsy swimmer at best because of his heavy armor. He's far more at home on the hammock's dry ground, but sometimes he has to swim to reach a new area. Suddenly, through the clear water, the otter spies a bobcat walking on the shoreline above. This is the otter's favorite log, and the element of danger involved in tempting a powerful and hungry bobcat is overshadowed by the fact that the otter is annoyed. His territory has been infringed upon, and he doesn't hesitate to let it be known. At the same time, he's very careful to stay out of reach of the more powerful bobcat. To the otter, there's a certain enjoyment and excitement in skirting the danger by the very narrowest of margins. The bobcat, realizing the futility of this activity, decides to look elsewhere in the hammock for prey. The scent of an opossum on a low branch nearby is in the air. And while opossum meat isn't the number one choice, the bobcat is still curious enough to want a closer look. He's in no real hurry and knows that unless forced to flee, the opossum isn't going to leave his isolated tree, which extends out over the water. Sluggish and dull and having poor defenses, the opossum knows he's in danger right now. The otter has been watching this little drama unfold in the branches over the water. The otter moves in for a closer look only because he seldom gets a chance to see an opossum in the water. The water is a safe retreat this time and has been an avenue of survival. On the other shore, the opossum will be safe from the bobcat. The very confinement of the hammocks makes confrontations between different wild animals occur frequently and often with unexpected results. The bobcat's hunger has not yet been appeased and he's still actively hunting. He's often dined on snakes in the past, and this big yellow rat snake could be next. The rat snake's not venomous, so as part of its defense, it releases a pungent odor. The effect of this is strange indeed. As the snake coils tightly with no further attempt at defense, the bobcat undergoes a sudden change of attitude. Its hunger is temporarily forgotten. The scent of the snake has affected the bobcat almost the same way that catnip affects a domestic cat. Mm. 
he seems to take immense pleasure out of this rubbing, forgetting practically everything else, including hunger for a while. even when the pangs of hunger return abruptly to the bobcat. They are not directed against the snake, though it would make a good meal. Instead, the cat simply abandons the snake and resumes hunting. With the bobcat well away in the hammock, heading toward the water, the yellow rat snake can resume its own activities, none the worse for the encounter. It's not long before the bobcat detects the scent of new prey. This big mallard duck looks to be in perfect health, but it's not. Only a few days ago, it struck a branch while landing and injured one of its wings. Now, unable to fly, its life is in jeopardy. Intuitively, the bobcat realizes something's wrong with this duck, and now the hunt is on in earnest. Nature's law has prevailed. Only the fittest survive. And now, as peace settles over the hammock again, the otter, himself becoming a little hungry, sets off in a meandering way beneath the surface, ready to pursue any manner of prey which might cross his path. The otter's attention is attracted by a small splash, and he sees a leopard frog that has dived in from shore. Immediately, the chase is on. escape for this frog, despite its efforts to get away. But its death as food for the otter is also part of nature's plan, part of the cycle of life at Otter Hammock. This underwater activity has been detected by one of the most powerful predators of the Everglades, the alligator. It is the only creature in the area which the otter very studiously avoids. 
he knows only too well the danger. Dangerous in another way is the poisonous cottonmouth moccasin. He too respects the potential danger of the alligator, but is somewhat bolder when confrontations between them occur. The snake's bite could be fatal to the alligator. If the fangs punctured the eye or the tongue of the much larger reptile, the venom could kill it. But the jaws of the gator could also end the snake's life with a single savage snap. It is the courage of the cottonmouth which falters as the gator begins the slow movement, usually preceding attack. This is not a safe area, and for now, the otter seeks less hazardous regions. While the animals of the Everglades are more active at night than in the daytime, there is nevertheless always some sort of animal activity occurring, even in the mid-afternoon. All animals living at otter hammocks remain alert for danger. A raccoon detects the approach of a big cougar who is on the prowl for a meal. This cat would quickly kill and eat a raccoon like this. And that's a possibility the raccoon quickly recognizes. With no waste of time, the raccoon heads for a tall palm tree where he may find a refuge from the dangerous cat. The cougar's approach is casual, but this does not fool the raccoon. Though acting disinterested, the cougar knows precisely where his prospective prey has gone. The time for pretense is past, and the raccoon braces itself for what's coming. Weak old frond stubs are hazardous, and not wanting to fall, the cougar decides to try another mode of attack. The cougar will make his next try from this neighboring tree, from which he may be able to more readily and safely get at the raccoon. But now the raccoon can breathe a little easier. The cougars just discovered that his plan for catching the raccoon has a few loose ends. There must be prey around easier to catch, and so now the cougar leaves the raccoon in peace and heads for the more open sawgrass on the outer edge of Otter Hammock. Here, there's a stretch of dry ground that an armadillo has, unfortunately for him, selected to cross at this time. He's spotted at once by the big predator. Some distance away in the sawgrass, a young buck, antlers still in velvet, sees the danger that the nearsighted armadillo does not yet fully comprehend. The cougar is the greatest natural enemy of the deer here in the Everglades. But the armadillo is the cat's target at the moment. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
A sudden shift of the wind brings to the cougar the strong scent of the deer, who instantly takes alarm and seeks safer quarters. The armadillo will soon weaken under the attack, and with a savage bite of the unprotected underside, the cougar will kill it, then eat it at his leisure. But even the cougar doesn't like being so exposed. He decides to carry his prey back to the seclusion of the hammock's dense cover. Seeing the big cat returning with the armadillo, the otter seeks again the quiet and safety of the underwater portion of its world. This habitat of otter hammock and the waters within it and around it are filled with danger as well as with beauty. Each creature has its place and survives by learning the dangers and how to avoid them. Long ago, the wise otter learned that even baby alligators have bad tempers and sharp teeth. Alligators, large or small, bite savagely. So the otter survives by not pressing his luck. Today at Otter Hammock, like all other days, the animals have learned new lessons on surviving in their own particular habitat. There is always strong competition for food, and the otter occasionally finds that another predator is also eyeing the same prey that he himself is contemplating. The frog would make a nice little meal for him. But this time, the bass is swifter. The loss of his potential prey doesn't really concern the otter. Food for him is abundant everywhere here. In the water, and on the little islands that spring up from the sea of sawgrass, which surrounds Otter Hammock. The multitude of hammocks in the Florida Everglades play a vital role in the cycle of life for all the wild inhabitants of this great sea of sawgrass for deer as well as for bear, panthers, otters, and so many other wild animals, these islands are places to rest and sleep, to bear their young undisturbed by man, to live out their lives in contented seclusion. Many of the hammocks have been preserved, but many others are presently threatened with destruction. It is man's responsibility, yours and mine, to see that they are safeguarded and can remain what they are now the perfect habitat for the numerous animals now living in this vast sea of grass portion of the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, the people who pay, has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.